Law 22, use the surrender tactic. Transform weakness into power. When you are weaker, never fight for honor's sake. Choose surrender instead. Surrender gives you time to recover, time to torment and irritate your conqueror, time to wait for his power to wane. Do not give him the satisfaction of fighting and defeating you. Surrender first. By turning the other cheek, you infuriate and unsettle him. Make surrender a tool of power. Now I feel like this law is very challenging for some people. It's very confronting because the idea of surrender in a lot of males and in a lot of when it's facing the masculine energy of a male can be very challenging. It can be challenging to one's ego because as males, a lot of us we don't want to surrender because we see that as a sign of weakness. We cannot see past the tactic of surrendering in some situations, whether that be in real life or in a, in a fight or whether that be in an argument or whatever it be. We cannot s sometimes see past the superficial benefit of a fight to satisfy our ego. And the next story will show how one falls due to honor. Transgression of the law. In classical times, uh, the city of Athens, everybody knows that one of the most famous cities of Greece, um, dominated uh, this large sea and coastal area around Greece. Uh, and this island called Mi Melos was well, was in a prime position, in the, right in the heart of the Mediterranean. And the Athenians wanted this island. Okay, Melos had teamed up and allied with Sparta. Now the Malayans refused to ally themselves with Athens and they want to remain loyal to Sparta. And we'll see how this becomes their downfall very soon. Athenians send a party to try and uh, persuade the Mal Malayans to surrender and become an ally or suffer defeat, suffer being destroyed. The Malayans talked on, you know, the gods and honor and loyalty to Sparta and all this stuff that they, they believed in, their beliefs. The Athenians said, do not be led astray by a false sense of honor. Honor often brings men to ruin when they are faced with obvious danger that somehow affects their pride. Now, if anybody's seen Game of Thrones, I don't want to spoil anything, but we see this many times. People have died so many times in that show because of honor. People die so many times uh, in shows based in, you know, around this time, around this era because of honor. They still declined, even after much, much discussion. And a few days later, the Athenians invaded Melos. The, the Malayans, they fought, but they lost. And they finally surrendered. And the Athenians ended up putting to death pretty much everybody. All the men. They captured the city, sold the women and children as slaves, and repopulated it with its own people. Only a handful. A handful of Malayans survived. And all because they were a martyr. They, they, they were willing to die for their honor when they were clearly weaker. Sparta didn't even come to help them. That's the thing. Their own ally didn't even come to help them. Interpretation. When you are weaker, there is nothing to be gained by fighting a useless fight. No one comes to help the weak, just like Sparta didn't. By doing so, they would only put themselves in jeopardy. So Sparta protected itself by not coming and uh, the Malayans, well, they don't exist anymore. As far as I know. Fighting gives you nothing to gain but martyrdom and in the process a lot of people who do not believe in your cause will die. You know, see surrendering is not always so bad. You know had the Malayans surrendered in the first place they, w they could have been able to sabotage the Athenians in subtle ways or could have got a benefit out of an alliance with Athens for a time being and then when Athens were weak in a certain period of time which they in fact were many years later they could have taken advantage of that and teamed up with Sparta and destroyed them. Surrender conceals great power, lulling the enemy into complacency, it gives you time to recoup, time to undermine, time for revenge. Never sacrifice that time in exchange for honor in a battle that you cannot win. Keys to power. It is always our first instinct to react to meet aggression with some other kind of aggression. But the next time someone pushes you and you find yourself starting to react, try this. Do not resist or fight back, but yield, turn the other cheek. Bend. You will find that this often neutralizes their behavior. They expected, even wanted you to react with force, and so they are caught off guard and confounded by your lack of resistance. By yielding, you in fact control the situation, because your surrender is part of a larger plan to lull them into believing they have defeated you. This is the essence of surrender tactic. Inwardly, you stay firm, but outwardly, you bend. I really like what he wrote there. 
it's, it's quite a bit, um, but we always tend to meet fire with fire, aggression with aggression. And I think that's a, that's a pretty solid actionable takeaway that a lot of us can use for next time when it's in some type of conflict. And our usual reaction is fire and aggression. Maybe we should balance that with water and calmness and turn the other cheek and see how that works out for the moment. But don't forget, you're not actually surrendering. You are simply controlling and manipulating your emotion uh, for time and energy's sake. Those who generally surrender give up their freedom and may be crushed by hum the humiliation of their defeat. You have to remember that you only appear to surrender, like the animal that plays dead to save its hide. Power is always in flux, since the game is by nature fluid and an arena of constant struggle. Those with power almost always find themselves eventually on the downward swing. I think that idea of power always being in flux um, symbolizes this book and all its ideas very well. I just had to mention that. It's all these laws, relevant and it can be very direct and straightforward. There's always a reversal. There's always a contradictory. There's always uh, a pivot that we that we can make. Nothing is always 100%. It's always in flux. If you find yourself temporarily weakened, the surrender tactic is perfect for raising yourself up again. It disguises your ambition, it teaches you patience and self-control, key skills in the game, and puts you in the best possible position of taking advantage of your oppressor's sudden slide. Image An oak tree. The oak that resists the wind loses its branches one by one, and with nothing left to protect it, the trunk finally snaps. The oak that bends, living longer, its trunk growing wider, its roots deeper and more tenacious. Reversal There are times when the enemy will not relent and Mighty Dom seems the only way out. Furthermore, if you are willing to die, others may gain power and inspiration from your example. Because that's what Mighty Dom is, it is dying for your beliefs. But now, today, we, we that's very drastic, we're not gonna usually die for our beliefs, especially if you live in a western country. But if you live in live in places like the Middle East, well, that's real for them. Don't think for a second that they won't die for what they believe in. We see it frequently in the terrorist attacks that ripple throughout our world. But with you and me, we will not Mardi Dom, but we will sometimes have to fight when other people will not relent. And this may physically harm us. Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, sometimes we have to make that sacrifice. But for every famous martyr, there are thousands more who are inspired neither a religion nor a rebellion. So if that Mardi Dom does sometimes grant a certain power, it does so unpredictably. Unpredictably. When power deserts you, it's, it is best to ignore the law's reversal. Leave Mardi Dom alone. The pendulum will swing back your way eventually, and you should stay alive to see it. Law 22, use the surrender tactic, transform weakness into power.